Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, little bit chilly day in hot Atlanta, Georgia. I am <coughs> back in the old hometown here on this lovely, it is a Thursday, November 2nd, 2023, and uh, I have been packing and on the road and stuff for past several days have not had time to uh, do much doom scrolling and checking in with my fellow doomers and reading medium.com and whatnot in several days so uh, I say it was November 2nd at this point so when was it about a week ago maybe one of the last rants I did was uh, shall we say, critiquing that hatchet job on my hero Thomas Malthus that the darling of the Doomosphere, Jessica Wildfire, wrote and uh, did that rant. I was thinking I should probably post this rant over there on that other channel that we don't talk about here on Collapse Chronicles because you know on Collapse Chronicles I I try to make it more <laughs> I try to make it more of a what is this a family show over here and I leave any of that controversial stuff over there to that loudmouth idiot on that other channel but for whatever reason I chose to run it on Collapse Chronicles thinking that uh, my guess when I ran that that I would have about an even number of upvotes and, and downvotes <coughs> and I was totally shocked to see that I had 53 thumbs up two thumbs down on that uh, ran about Jessica Wildfire talking trash about Thomas Malthus and basically saying without saying it talking about the New World Order depopulation agenda is what was just below the surface of that rant that's clearly what Jessica was talking about you know the most unadulterated the most unadulterated horseshit wacky conspiracy theory on the planet I was absolutely shocked absolutely shocked to see that Jessica wrote this uh, I would love to share some of the private comments I have gotten uh, from other doomers uh, about that rat uh, who were no way they were going to comment publicly because you just there, there's just some people you know who are unassailable uh, of course uh, Michael Dowd would be uh, would be one of these people that you absolutely especially now uh, do not talk trash about Michael Dowd. You do not talk trash about Jessica Wildfire. I mean, she is clearly, she is as close to the Greta Thunberg, uh, you know, of the hero worship in, in here in the uh, in the Doomosphere. But I am the bad boy. <laughs> So I did have to point out in this case that the Empress uh, had no clothes and uh, then, uh, as I say, was totally shocked about the 53 thumbs up, although I do notice that I have lost 13 subscribers in the last since I did that rant that I am down 13 subscribers so maybe that's how they cast their vote but anyway so here it is today and I'm finally taking a break where I can do some doom scrolling and I come over here to medium.com and I find you know one of my all-time 
favorite Doomer writers, uh, Michael Campy. Uh, Michael Campy is a Doomer. I, some of you probably know that Michael Campy and I, I think, agree on about 99% of the uh, stuff uh, that Doomers talk about. We have one one little point of contention, which of course is the Corona Panic, and Michael and Jessica are 180 degrees uh, opposed to anyone, any Doomer with my views, that compared to what is coming down the pike, once again, nobody, I think including Michael Campy, has ever read the first half of the sentence compared to what is coming down the pike, Corona Panic is a bad hair day. Okay, uh, so when I opened up this, I think this probably has as much to do with corona panic between the lines. So anyway, I open up after a, you, you know, I have read many of Michael's fine essays. I have interviewed Michael uh, on this channel. I have, my evil twin has interviewed Michael over on his channel. I have, you know, I found Michael a year ago and uh, <clears throat> I've done everything I can to promote his work, but apparently uh, this will probably be the last time I promote Michael Campy's work, because as far as I know, our friendship has been destroyed probably really over the corona panic, but he's using the Jessica wildfire rant, I guess, as the <laughs> as the final the final uh, nail in the friendship between Sam Mitchell and Michael Camp Michael Campy. So this is Michael's response to my rant on uh, on Jessica wildfire, although of course M Michael gives me no credit. No credit uh, for being the inspiration of this rant. Because, you, you know, Michael is probably thinking, okay, how can I really piss off Sam uh, when I write this hatchet job against him? Uh, how can I really piss that son of a bitch off? And uh, Michael knows me well enough to know is just don't mention me. Uh, he, he would not have written this rant if, if not for me. I am the sole reason he wrote this rant. And he gives me no, <laughs> and he gives me no credit. So I have to give myself all the credit for this fine rant. I'll just gonna re I'll put the link on to Michael Campy's uh, hilarious new uh, I, I'll read about the first half and you can you can take it from here. So this is Michael Campy responding to Sam Mitchell's hatchet job of Jessica Wildfire's hatchet job of Thomas Malthus. <clears throat> Will the real Doomer please stand up? Doomer cancel culture. He starts off with a quote from Bill Murray from Groundhog Day. Uh, Quote, I'm not the God, but I am a God. <clears throat> that quote not, notwithstanding, it appears that a lot of Doomers want to be the Doomer, the real deal, the big kahuna, the jefe, the chief executive Doomer, the only Doomer <laughs> that has the real scoop. I guess I must like deceiving myself into thinking that because the whole planet is going down in flames, that maybe, just maybe, folks who share the Doomer mindset 
would want to, I don't know, come together on the issue. That does not seem to be the case. Bickering, infighting, outright attacks, and other childish behaviors are becoming the norm. Why can't we all just get along? And then, of course, what this whole thing is, I mean, it's a humorous one. This is an outright attack, uh, a, a very humorous uh, outright attack against Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles for attacking uh, Michael's friend, uh, Jessica. It, 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 anyway, guys, but you can read it uh, talking about basically, you, you know, putting doomers out in the gladiator fields and uh, <laughs> having us kill each other. Uh, as I pointed out to him, there it's not a fair fight that the preppers, you know, those clueless morons of the doomosphere, the preppers would uh, have us killed in a second. I, you know, I pointed out the only thing that I am doing the only thing I am doing to prepare for the collapse of global industrial civilization is to buy about 50 pairs of these uh, cheap reading glasses from the dollar twenty-five tree. I, I don't think bringing a pair of reading glasses from the dollar twenty-five tree to a gladiator fight with a bunch of preppers, I. You know, it would not exactly be a fair fight, so the preppers <clears throat> would win. Uh, so it's never going to happen, but uh, it, 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 it was a humorous idea. So The real doomer, so who is the darkest, doomiest person in the doomosphere? Uh, I would like to say that I am. Uh, that I am the darkest, doomiest person, but as you all know, I have passed that honor on to Andy the Gardener. Uh, I have been down here in the Doomosphere uh, for, what, 15 years, and Andy the Gardener uh, has always been, since early down here, I have never found... <laughs> a doomer any darker than Andy the Gardener. So Andy the Gardener, take a bow. You are uh, the darkiest doomer uh, that Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles has ever met. So uh, as much as I would like to be the big kahuna, what else, the hefty and the chief, the CEO of the Doomosphere, that honor goes to uh, Andy the Gardener. So what is the difference between Andy the Gardener and, and Sam Mitchell? Uh, I guess, unless I understand, unless I misunderstand Andy, I think that Andy the Gardener is a fan of human extinction. That, uh, and, and, and I was just hearing another Doomer last week talking about this very thing, about being a fan of human extinction, like, <clears throat> you know, when I interviewed, well, when my evil twin interviewed that person we never talk about on this channel, I asked him if he was a fan of human extinction, and he assured me that uh, he, he, even the, he, you know, of course who I'm talking about, even he is not a fan of human extinction. So the real doomer, uh, my definition, you know, as I mentioned on my soft white underbelly interview, I think I mentioned this, if, if you brought 10 doomers into a room and ask them to define the word doomer, you would get 11 answers. Uh, there's as many definitions of doomer as there are people calling themselves doomers. Uh, the definition of, you know, 
doom is a it, it, like so many things it, it, it's got different degrees different gradations uh, and and I like so many doomers it, it, there's generally some sort of progression uh, <clears throat> from the original you, you know pulling your head uh, out of your clueless moron normy you know where there, there's first that initial whatever form it takes the epiphany uh, that we are doomed and then you go through the, uh, the, the the stages I've been down here going through the stages for 15 years till you finally accept the fact that we are doomed uh, you reach acceptance that we, meaning not just global industrial civilized humans, but we, the entire human race, and much more importantly uh, than the human race, is every species of fellow earthling, at least bigger than a mouse, is doomed as long as humans walk this planet. And so the, the point that I personally have passed and Andy the gardener passed, I, my guess is we make up, as far as I can tell on my own unofficial research, we make up maybe 1% of the doomosphere Obviously, Michael Campy and Jessica Wildfire have not gone as dark uh, as Sam Mitchell and Andy the Gardener, possibly because Michael and uh, Jessica are both breeders. I think they only, they each have one child. Uh, and there is this thing that happens when you breed that probably I cannot imagine there are, are many doomers uh, I'm sorry many breeders that could pass the threshold that Andy the gardener and I have, have passed of course Andy the gardener it goes without saying is not a breeder so I'm guessing 99% of the 1% of us doomers who have crossed this point of acceptance are not breeders. Uh, and this is why Michael and Jessica will never join us over here on this side of the dark divide. And that is, as I talked about in my soft white underbelly, uh, interview is when you reach the conclusion, the obvious conclusion that the problem on this planet is humans. Humans. You, you can, in one word, any third grader uh, who's not a human looking at the situation on this planet well, we'll look at the situation for 10 minutes and diagnose the problem. The problem is humans. It's not even too many humans. It is humans. Humans. And so if the problem is humans, the only solution, there is one solution to the problem of humans and that is getting rid of the humans is making planet earth a human exclusion zone that you understand so some people uh, call people like me eco-nazis the uh, Alex Joneses of the world uh, and maybe the Jessica Wildfires of the world after reading her. Uh, so 
I, I, I just own the term. If, if the definition of an eco-Nazi is a human who understands that there is one final solution to every problem on this planet is to get rid of the humans, nothing short of human extinction is going to save every one of our fellow earthlings bigger than a mouse. If that is the definition of an eco-Nazi, then uh, I, I guess I am an eco-Nazi. Uh, whether that makes me the king of the doomers. But as th this other fellow, can't remember who this was, was talking about, this other doomer I was listening to in a rant last week, looking at this very question that this is where it gets dicey. So if you understand once you've come to accept the fact that the only solution to the problem on this planet, which is humans, is human extinction, does that make you a fan of it? So obviously, guys, uh, you know, it puts you in, in a little bit of a contradictory position. So I agree with that fellow I was listening to last week, that Doomer, right, saying the same thing. Uh, you know, I am not, quote, a fan of there's eight billion people of us dying horrible deaths. Uh, I am, you know, some of my best friends, not all of them, but a few of my best friends, my my dwindling number of friends, and I guess I, uh, I guess Michael Campy has uh, renounced uh, his friendship with me, so I have one less friend today than I had yesterday. You know, some of my best friends are humans. And I, I, I you can under, uh, okay, it's a, it, it, you can hold these two thoughts in your head at the same time. <clears throat> I don't think this is a contradiction. Having the intellectual knowledge, the certainty that the only way to save the planet is to exclude from humans, is to exclude the planet from human, exclude humans from the planet, does not necessarily mean that you, as a human, are a fan of it. But whether or not you are a fan of it, is completely irrelevant to the conclusion. Uh, it doesn't matter if, if one person, or it, it, it makes no difference if there is not one human being on the planet who is a fan of human extinction. If nobody on the planet is a fan of human extinction, does not change in any way, shape, or form the inexplicable, the inescapable conclusion that the only way to save the planet is to get humans off of it. So I can carry this, uh, both of these thoughts in my head, but a lot of people can't. And I really need to be careful here mentioning uh, Carlos Castaneda <clears throat> in the teachings of Don Juan Matus. But I, I think one of the things that has helped me <clears throat> be able to become one of the uh, darkest, doomiest people uh, that I know is the, the Castaneda... Don Juan teaching about 
what I call, I, I'm a little unclear even if Castaneda or Don Juan even use this term. <clears throat> this is the term I use, and maybe I am going one step beyond uh, the teachings of Don Juan, but what I say, what, when, when, you're, when you're just looking at what's going on on this planet through the eyes of an ecologist, that what doomers are, are, well, eco-Nazi brand of doomers, what we are, are ecologists. And when you can focus in on the problem of what's going on uh, on this planet, and coming to that conclusion, you need to get beyond the point of no pity. And uh, <clears throat> it, it is awful as that sounds to you know to to face up to the to the horror of it as Conrad the horror of it. Uh, you need to get beyond the place of no pity, which which is uh, having pity on uh, people, uh, on people I've never said that nobody died of corona panic. Uh, you need to get beyond the point of no pity like we're seeing there in Gaza. As I, uh, as I said in that rant, my only rant about Gaza, if <coughs> the population of Gaza, and I would say and Israel, were within their carrying capacity, meaning probably a max, absolute maximum of 10,000 people inside Gaza and an absolute maximum of, I don't know, 50,000 in Israel. If there were 10,000 people leave, living in Gaza, 50,000 people in Israel, you would not be having what's going on, on over there. What is happening is a classic example of uh, a society, uh, in this case Gaza, in severe overshoot. This is what it looks like. And, and, and even Acapulco, you could, you could even use that, that Acapulco, Mexico, my God, uh, it has been an overshoot probably since the first hotel was built in Acapulco. And all of the, when you have an economy virtually 100% dependent on tourism dollars, which is a form of foreign aid, and then that is ripped out from under them, what you have is what you're seeing in, uh, in, in Cozumel, which is exactly what you're seeing over there in Gaza, is all the looting and all of that uh, going on over there, and, and what hungry people act like. Uh, they, they act like uh, savages. Uh, and, and you can get a little taste of, of what's coming for the rest of this planet by looking at Acapulco and Gaza, but I'm getting a little bit uh, off track here. So, uh, as I say, uh, I, I, as much as I wish, Michael, that I could claim the spot of being the El Jefe of the Doomosphere, uh, compared to Andy the Gardener, I am a piker, because I think that Andy, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that Andy the Gardener is way beyond the point of no pity, way, way beyond, that he has cut all ties to the bonds of, of, of having pity on, on, on his fellow human, so that is the difference when you, the darkest doomer of them all, 
the undisputed hefe of uh, of the doomosphere is going to come out of that group of people that understand the problem as humans, understand the only solution to the problem of humans is to make planet Earth a human exclusion zone, and then to be a fan, be a fan of uh, having humans uh, go extinct. I, I wish, uh, I, I am still in the camp. We will see for how much longer. I am still in the camp that I wish a, a, a virus, a plague, a pestilence <coughs> would come along that uh, would not so much have a 100% kill rate, a 100% fatality rate, but that a virus would come along and sterilize 100% of uh, the human race. So I guess I am still a fan of global sterilization, of sterilizing every man, woman, and child on this planet as the way the, the as a way to reach the final solution of saving the planet is to sterilize the entire human race. So I'm one step away from the darky from the darkest darkiest doomer uh, out there. But anyway, uh, Michael Campy, uh, it's been fun. I'm actually surprised that our friendship lasted uh, as long as it did, uh, considering our differences of opinion over a, uh, over a pandemic with a kill rate of 0.2% or if it was a kill rate of five times corona panics would mean that 99% of people did not die of corona panic. If it was five times the rate, uh, in which I really think what this is about. But anyway, I have lost, good Lord, I have lost my brother to Corona Panic, not that he died of it. Uh, it has cost me my relationship with my brother, my relationship with how many of my close friends has been destroyed over Corona Panic, uh, hundreds of subscribers will never speak to me again. Uh, so whether this has anything to do with Jessica Wildfire, whatever this uh, attack on Sam Mitchell at Collapse of the Chronicles is all about, but if anybody was wondering what Michael Campy's newest rant, who inspired it, it was me, the bad boy of the Doomosphere. Someone's got to do it, but what I got to do now is wrap this up and... Go check out this gorgeous day in hot Atlanta, GA, while I still can. Bye, guys.